And again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, you have an opportunity to call into the radio station with your Bible questions and receive Bible answers to we your Bible questions. We do want to appreciate questions. all those who have left uh, comments and questions for us to even address on the YouTube. That's also available to you. And uh, these men have have responded to the comments and to uh, the question that was posed to them in a godly manner, and I appreciate uh, their efforts. Again, thank Brother Javier for the wonderful Amen. work yes. uh, that he does, and every member of the Wilson Road Church of Christ uh, who think it not robbery to put this program on. Again, we don't get on the air. Wilson Road Church of Christ uh, have not gone on the air in the seven years, I think, we've been on this program and haven't uh, solicited not one copper penny uh, from you, the radio listeners. Uh, this is a work that uh, the Wilson Road Church of Christ believes to be a good work, and so it's worthy of their supporting, and I just appreciate every member of that congregation Amen. for thinking it not robbery for what we do here. Uh, and for those of uh, who were who, who didn't tune in on last week, we had a question that was posed. And what we want to do is I do want to go ahead and I'm going to toss it to Brother uh, Stephen Ozan uh, to elaborate on the caller's uh, comment and question that was made on last week uh, about having a friend, I believe, if memory served me right, who was depressed. Uh, who was going through depression and wanted to know what scriptures or what remedy would we give as men of God, as preachers of the gospel, to help such a person who is in a depressed state of mind. And so at this time, uh, Brother Ozan did elaborate on it uh, a bit last week, but I'm going to toss it to him to just give some more clarity on what he has stated on last week. At this time, Brother Stephen Ozan. Amen. Thank you, Henry. God bless all those seeking the law that you find them soon before it is too late. We want to talk about this state of depression, which affects all of our lives at some point, but sometimes we can't get out of it because we don't seek the authority who can get us out, and that's the Lord himself. And, you know, we talked about last week how that Jesus says to come to me, all you that are heavy laden, and uh, take on my burden because it is light. Brother Hamilton gave an excellent explanation those of you that were not with us uh, concerning understanding the thoughts of Solomon were penned, uh, that he sought other methods other than the Lord to relieve himself of, of, of states of depression and to no avail. Brother Henry pointed out to kick us off that uh, it is because Christ is not in the life. Now I know you will say, as we did talk about a little last week and, and we ran out of time, want to respect the station uh, that allows us to be on the airways by the grace of God that we will respect the time frame. But now we have to understand, I know Christians get depressed. We know that. But the Christians that get depressed must still turn to the same source that brought them out of their state of damnation, which is God himself. Now look at 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 3. It says, as Paul writes, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. That's who you need in a time of depression. And the God of our comfort. You know why? Because some of the depression that you're in, if the audience is the specific audience who was listening last week, because we did alert you that we would be back on the air to finish this up, and we appreciate the lady who called and had some of her friends listening. It's a commendable uh, task to um, take to try and help people get out of depression. But what you have to understand is, is that in some cases you cause it yourself, and you know that, and the devil is really really beating you up about it. But remember, the Father of mercies, now that means he is the creator of mercy. And he is the God, the supreme deity of all comfort. If you need mercy for something you've done, if you need comfort to relieve your conscience of it, you got to come to God. Verse 4 he says, and it was still 2 Corinthians 1 and 4, who comforted us, who was Paul and his group, in all our tribulation, and others he knows of, that we may be able to comfort them. So this is why God has done it, which are in any trouble. It doesn't matter. Paul never had a wife, but he would know from the comfort God gave him through what he did go through, how to tell you how to deal with the depression maybe your wife has caused on you. And I know that's a theme throughout uh, Christianity, and it is a theme also in false churches, that if you're not married, you don't know what it's like. Well, friend, I have to tell you, you don't know what you're talking about, because yeah. Jesus was never physically married, and nor was Paul. 
Jesus is greater than Paul, but Paul followed Jesus' lead and is one of the greatest teachers on marriage. He wrote the chapter and was authorized, but you didn't write anything yet and you're never going to, and nor am I. We read what is already written. So don't go around with spit that out of your mouth, talking about how a person has to be married to counsel a married couple. They don't. But they need to know the laws that God has written and the advice God has given. And so therefore he says, so we're able to comfort one in one in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So it's the same comfort so we know, hey, God can help you too. Verse 5, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And wherewith we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. So those things were happening to bring them comfort to know that God let them know of the state of Paul and his friends that were in the gospel, that to let them know I can help you too. God wanted to let uh, the people know I can help you through these same people. And he says, uh, which is effectual and enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you also be of the consolation. Now, I believe we have a caller on the line right now, and we're going to take this call. We're going to pause a moment and take this call. Caller, are you there? Can you hear me? Go yeah. ahead, caller. How you doing? You're absolutely right. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. We hear you. I'm assuming you can hear me. Yeah, we got you. We, we hear you. Go ahead, block. Go ahead, uh, caller. You don't go. You don't go? Okay, he just he just gave us uh, a, a, a vote of encouragement that we were absolutely right. And uh, we acknowledge that because we have just read it from the Bible. And so, therefore, uh, we appreciate... Uh, I believe that was blind man and acknowledging truth when he hears it. And so therefore, you know, we want you to understand, look at the term all these people were in. Verse 8, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were oppressed out of measure. Now you see that? This, this tribulation, this burden was beyond what you would think a person could go through. Above strength, that's above whatever energy you have to fight it. And so much that we despair even our life. Have you thought that way before? That you say, well, we're just going to die in this deal. This deal is so tough. Lord, just take me. It's over. And Paul, I'm saying, well, just, that's how they felt. He said, but we had the sentence of death, verse 9, in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raised the dead. Now, God raises the dead. So Paul was, you know, saying, you know, yeah, well, this was allowed to exist in us, and we could recognize it, game over. But that made us not trust in self, which you can't trust in yourself. And let me tell you what else you can't do. Those of you that are trying psychiatrists, and you're getting small little pills of dope that numb your senses, but when you're sober, you still got your problem. The psychiatrist, his life is as shot as yours because he has no Bible. He's using empty words. He studied the brain and he studied list and endless CDs and recordings of people who are struggling with depression. And none of that gives you the answer. He comes up with superficial hope, pie in the sky, by and by dreams. But God says, I made you. I know why you're sad. And I know what's wrong with you. Even mm -hmm. though you have my spirit for the Christian, he says, I know why you're sad. And, and Paul is saying, we knew we were dead men. But God let us know, hey, I raised the dead. So it was like, well, the worst they can do is kill us. And then we would be raised up if God wanted us to exist for us. So that, that fear was removed from Paul, verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and thought delivered continually. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. You also helping together by prayer for us. Notice he's talking to Christians. He isn't talking to Jews who, who desires to be Christian. He isn't talking to Philistines. He's talking to the saints. He says your prayer for us. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons. Thanks may be given by many on our behalf. 
And so we were telling those of you that are depressed, don't give up. But you won't find your answer in uh, a guy with an office full of books and a pair of glasses on the bottom of his nose with his legs crossed. He doesn't know what he's doing. He'll drink a shot of gin as soon as you leave in the little cubby hole he hides it to keep going on. He can't help you, but God's people can. Okay, we have another call on the line. Yeah. Caller, go ahead. Uh, don't be scared and hang up on me now. Uh, come but what I'm saying to the people... Blind man, blind man. No one hang up on you. It's a, radio yeah, disconnection. So go and state your statement, okay. sir, please, it's a, quickly. It's a spirit of depression. You're absolutely right. The good thing about being oppressed with the spirit of depression is the Holy Ghost can fill you to the exact same measure. If you depressed and downhearted, the, the Lord will not take the spirit of depression out of you without putting in the place of it the Holy Spirit. So count yourself blessed. For as depressed as you are, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. But you got to trust Jesus Christ. And you're absolutely right, preacher, and I'm out your way. How do you receive Blind man, how would you receive the Holy Spirit? Help us. He got off the air. Uh, one of the things we want to say is blind man is very zealous, but unfortunately he is Romans 10, 1 through 4. He has not the knowledge. He has the desire to share with the audience the encouragement. But it is nothing more than a motivation, a rah-rah speech, because he doesn't know the formula of receiving the Spirit. And the Spirit is, an, it is not, it is not, the Spirit is not an emotional thing thought. He is an entity. He is a spirit that moves about where he desires, where he knows a problem soul is and blind man is right. He will fill you, but if you're not a member of the large church, he will not. And you will stay in the state of depression. You will do as Solomon did, build you pretty buildings and drink a lot of wine. But when you sober, that building will be a mockery. It'll be nothing but wood and brick and mortar. And you will despise its existence just as he. And that's why after some time when people, kids leave home, it's over for them. Their life was their children because they did not have a life. Sometimes when a spouse dies, it's over. It shouldn't be. Jesus didn't die. Man. Sometimes when a parent will die, it's over. Jesus says a lot. You know what? The love your parents, your spouse, and your children give you, guess who they got it from? Jesus Christ. And he's still vibrantly alive. But you, without a relationship with him, you suddenly feel the emptiness again. Friend, you must come to Jesus. Amen. And not just to get well. Jesus isn't one of these fly by night doctors. You just can't come to Jesus when you say, pump me up, Lord, make me happy, and then go out and live your life separate from the Lord. He won't do it because he knows he's going to lose you if he does it. He wants you in heaven with him. And so therefore, he wants you not to have an experience of hell on earth. He calls us to peace, 1 Corinthians 7 teaches. And if you want to relieve yourself of the depression, one of the main people you have to get away from, get away from and run, is false doctrine teachers. Amen. I.e., Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Muslim, Buddhist teachers. Run from them. They are the plague. And come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. He made you. And he can heal them too, but they refuse. And see, that's why they pump you up and say, you ought to be happy like me. Your ship coming in, but your boat is shipwrecked. It never comes in. He's riding in your boat. <laughs> And you don't understand that, friend. And you're depressed. You, you don't have the job you want. You, and you're looking now, you're almost mad at Jesus. But it isn't Jesus' fault. Jesus wants to heal you from within That's and right. then show it out. Not from without to within. And if you don't know the formula, it's just a raw, raw speech. God can do it. Amen. We had church today. You didn't have anything, friend. That's right. You had a raw, raw speech. And now it's Sunday night. And you're lonely. But God wants to be your only king and creator and ruler in your heart. Because that's what he actually is. I'm telling you, friend. You've got to come to the church and study and reach for God. He will lift you up. Because there's some more stuff going to come in your life. Satan don't let up. He's a 24-7 devil. He's going to bring something else right. to pull you down.
you're a homosexual, you're a lesbian, you're depressed. I can't get out of it. You say you can if you come to Jesus. Amen. Let him hear you. The number to call is 281-837-2222. God bless you. You know, brother, brother I, I want to commend you. I mean, personally, you know, you did a wonderful job because, you know, if people can understand and, and believe what was just written, uh, uh, you know, spoken into their hearing from the word of God, then people could be healed of all their infirmities. You know, and, and, and you know, pe pe but, the, but the bottom line is that people want to do or they want to heal themselves. You know, you, you, you think back to Naaman when he came to, uh, you know, Elisha and he wanted to be little, healed of, of leprosy and he had all these gifts that he had with him and everything. Uh, you know, when, when Naaman came to Elisha, he had, he had an idea about how he wanted things to go. That's why he brought all the gifts. He wanted to give the gifts, make some big fanfare, and then, you know, go into some place and, you know, do some hocus pocus and let this, you know, miraculous thing take place. That, that, that's what he thought was going to happen right. his desire. When Israel told him to go dip into Jordan seven times, you know, that, that didn't fit, uh, you know, that didn't fit his, his vision of how things would, would transpire. You know, he had a rebuttal. He said, well, you know, can I go dip into what's wrong with the water of Bashar? I mean, you know, this, this water, this Jordan water is kind of dirty, you know? And you know, right. and and you know, he told, but the instructions that he gave him were the instructions from God. Period. Now, if if, if Naaman had really had, had continued to be displeased with the instructions that Elisha had given him, then he Naaman would have died a leper. And that's just, that's just the bottom line of it. Amen. You know? And right. the same and the same thing goes with anybody, and, and not only depression, but any scenario, any situation Perfect. in life. Perfect. If a person doesn't want to uh, submit to what the instructions that God has given, then they will not get the results that God has promised. And, that, and that's the bottom line, you know. And, and brother, you know, you 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 brought forward, like I say, an excellent point. Amen. Uh, he did a wonderful uh, job. Uh, when you when you and when you when you when you deal with uh, rah rah speeches, you know, optimism, you know, uh, you know, well, you know, because God can do this, and He can do even greater things. Yeah, and everybody cheer and have a wonderful time. They can't go home sad, eating all the ice cream in the house, drinking drinking uh, booze and all this kind of stuff, because that foolishness don't work. Anybody can get people hyped up emotionally. That's right. And you know, and, and everybody they sad and they go to a club and they get crunk and they get excited and they go out with their friends, they have a good time, they come home by themselves. Oh, y'all wanna y'all wanna spend the night or anybody wanna stay over? Mm. No, we got a place we gotta be. Mm. Okay. You stay up three o'clock in the morning, insomniac, can't sleep because you you watch a movie all night long because you you scared to go to bed by yourself. That's you right. Know, the, the nightmares, you know, the nightmares you have and all that kind of foolishness. You know, but that's how that cause that foolishness doesn't work. That's right. It's 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 ineffective. So we are, we have to call. We we gonna continue for We have to call you on the hey Go ahead, call you on the air. Doing, doing, doing fine, doing? sir. Go ahead, sir. Got a question. Yes, sir. On uh, First Corinthians uh, seven verses fifteen, is, is the non-believer? Is that talking about someone that is not a member of the church, or is that speaking of someone that have sinned and refused to repent of their sin? Okay. Now you're saying First Corinthians seven sixteen. Verses 15. 15. 15. Okay, I'm going to read that. It says, but if, now this is Paul giving instruction, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God had called us to peace. So that unbelieving is anybody who stops believing. It could be it could be making reference to someone who's never obeyed the gospel, mm -hmm. but it could also be making reference to one who has obeyed the gospel and just stopped believing. That person becomes an unbeliever. See, what we have to understand, it's not once saved, always saved. Amen. Well, that's what I want to understand. And so, just as well as I'm sitting here today, a believer in Christ Jesus, I, by my own will, my own choice, could throw this Bible down and stop believing in Jesus, be married to a woman uh, who is a Christian. She loves the Lord. She's worshiping the Lord. She's trying to raise our kids according to the Lord. But I just tell her, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. I am serving Buddha. I then am a believer, I, an unbeliever rather. I come in the house and I'm beating her and, and she doesn't have to stay with me. I'm, I'm telling her don't bring the kids to church. Paul says, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. He says a brother or a sister, either way, whether it's a man becoming the unbeliever or a sister uh, who is an unbeliever, he said let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God it calls us to peace. Amen. And so I hope that I answered your question. The unbelieving there is, is anybody who, who, who doesn't believe. Now, when you look at the context, I guess, uh, I don't know if you brothers have anything else you want to add to that, uh, 1 Corinthians 7. Call, are you still there? 
oh, he's already hung up. And so an unbeliever would be anybody who doesn't believe. Now, I want to go back just real quickly because we're still going to deal with this subject of, of false doctrine that's taught in marriage, remar remarriage, and divorce. Uh, but, but these brothers have done a wonderful job, especially when we talk about the raw, raw speeches that we hear from the denominations today. See, the denominational churches, and what we mean denomination, are those who teach different doctrines. Uh, those who have not obeyed the gospel, haven't received the spirit the way the Bible said the spirit, they are, they are a denomination. They are not of Christ. They cannot help you, radio listeners. They cannot give you Jesus. All they can give you is the, the good about Jesus, what Jesus can do. Uh, he, he'll help you through, but they don't tell you how to receive the spirit of Christ. And in order to receive the Holy Spirit, which is the question we were going to ask our first caller, the Bible tells us we must obey the gospel. We must hear the gospel, believe it, repent of our sins. You've got to confess Jesus as Lord. And it's in the water gave a baptism by faith that Jesus does an operation where he gives you the spirit. Amen. He gives you the spirit. You are baptized with the spirit in the watery grave of baptism. There is, listen to me, radio listeners, there is no other way way to receive the spirit today. Amen. You have to obey the gospel. You can't pray and ask the spirit to come to you. You can't just uh, have an experience that happened in the middle of the night and say you receive the spirit. You can't say just because I don't, I don't drink no more. I don't smoke. I used to sell dope. I don't do those stuff no more. I don't beat my wife. I used to, I used to run women. And so therefore I don't do that no more because I believe the Bible and now I have the spirit. No, you don't. Amen. You don't have the spirit if you've not obeyed the God. Because there is only one way to receive the spirit today. And Christ has given the criteria in the word of God. And that is something that the denomination world, Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, they cannot tell you. They cannot help you. As Brother Ozan said, all they tell you is their, your boat is coming in. And like I said, their boat is always docked. And you're always going home. You're depressed. You're upset. You're wondering how come you can't make it through because you are focusing on the man instead of Jesus. Amen. Okay. And what we do in the church of Christ is we give you Jesus. We're not going to try to slide Jesus under the table by having hot dog parties, hamburgers party, mother days out. Not going to build no gyms for the young people to try to reach them. We're going to give them Jesus. Amen. And if they don't want to want Jesus, we will let them go. That's right. We will let them go because you can build all the gyms in the world. You can serve all the hot dogs and hamburgers in the world and people will still go home depressed. They will still die lost because they will still be in their sins. Amen. Now the Amen. number to call is 281-837-2222. We have another caller on the line and we want to address that caller's question. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. John 12, 48 says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word, that one he will judge. And I don't think no man can stand the judgment. Y'all have a nice day and I okay. agree with you entirely. <laughs> okay, well, thank, thank you. That was, that was blind me once again. I don't think it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was yeah, it and basically, like I said, you know, because, uh, I mean, the, the word of God is true. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, and this, I guess we can kind of wrap it. We'll pick up next week uh, with our other topic. We'll finish up uh, with the marriage divorce deal. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and uh, verse 1. <clears throat> gives us a blueprint uh, for, for finding joy uh, in this life. Uh, he says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. For, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. If Christ, who is our life, shall when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And that's what keeps the saint, uh, those of us that are members of the church, uh, Joyful, Amen. even in times of tribulation. That's how that ties right in with, with brothers that read in Second Corinthians, uh, chapter chapter one, where he talks about uh, the comfort uh, that they were comforted. They comforted the other saints with. He, and, and Paul went through various situations where he there was much tribulation in his life. Nevertheless, uh, he, he 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 was able to be comforted because, regardless to what happens in this life, his his life is here with Christ, here with Christ. Amen. And nothing can take away that life that is here in Christ. It is safe. It, it can't be touched, it can't be ruined, it can't be tarnished, it can't be rusted. It, 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 it's protected, guaranteed. And so for, the, for those of us that are saints, that's how we avoid, uh, that's, why we, that's how we avoid depression. We're, right. we're men of like passion like anybody else, including the people that's on this program. Uh, we, we have issues in life. Our family members get sick, 
You know, people die in our family. You know, people don't always act the way we want them to act in our family, and vice versa. People at our job, we lose jobs. You know, lose properties. All that kind of stuff. We have the same problems. But the reason we can continue to have joy is that our life is not does not consist of these things, these earthly things, Man. including including family and friends and any of those things. But yeah, we we have connections, and those things bring us temporary joy. But we understand those things are temporary. Our our eternal joy it rests in safe in heaven with the Son and with the Father. And that and and and, and, and Ray Lewis is talking about depression. That is the that is the only way that you're going to receive uh, joy or be able to escape depression is, is that you take your your you take your hopes and your dreams and your and, and your joy out of this world and you place it in heaven with with Jesus Christ. And I'm call two eight one eight three seven twenty two twenty. We got about fifteen seconds. Let me just leave you with words of Jesus who says and will validate everything these great brothers said. If you have a person who's depressed it's because you need to you need to examine yourself where your heart is. Amen. You're focusing too much on the worldly things. And Jesus right, sums this up, and, and we're going to close, Matthew 6, starting at verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what will or shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Now get this, but Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, Amen and his righteousness, Amen. and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. What are you depressed about? You can't control the morrow. That's right. He said, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Yes. My friend, focus on Jesus. Turn to Jesus and he can help you with your depression. Do what you need to do to have your soul saved from sin. Receive the Spirit of Christ by being obedient to the gospel. Hear the gospel, believe it, repent of your sin, confess Jesus as Lord, and be baptized in the Christ by a Christian, a male Christian, one who is a member of the body of Christ, where the Lord will add you to the one church, Acts 2.47, that Jesus said he was going to build. And he did it in Acts chapter 2. We lead the faithful saints of God with Romans 16.